It's an epic, a 15-year onslaught against crumbling, outdated school buildings like Waverley School in Small Heath. These blocks could accommodate 300 students in the 60s, but not the 800 here now, let alone the 1,000 more on the waiting list. This place is beyond renovation or repair. It'll be rebuilt on a site just across the road. Any project as ambitious as building schools for the future is bound to be somewhat contentious. It creates winners and losers, as we've seen recently in Stoke-on-Trent and Tamworth. Which schools to rebuild and which ones not? Well, you can quite clearly see why this one is so close to the top of the pecking order. And yet, amazingly, over the past four years as a humanities college, it's become one of the highest-achieving council-run schools in the country, despite its buildings, not because of them. We've got leaky roofs, and the top floor is almost about to like, break. There's going to be a lot of more people, so then you're going to need a new building. The whole school needs to have lunch together and breaks together. That's why I think we need a fresh start. We're working very hard here, so every student deserves a new building. The head can identify with his students. He went to school here himself. Now it's about making sure that the facilities we have enable us to uh, deliver the curriculum in a very creative way that all students will enjoy and achieve you know, and uh, achieve success within the future. Birmingham's Cabinet today approved the partnership that will transform its 89 secondary and special schools. It's about the uh, stimulus it will provide for the local economy, the number of Birmingham people who will be uh, taking up jobs to uh, facilitate this build, the number of suppliers who will be asked to uh, bring the products to the sites to enable the facilities to be built. Complete with a new primary school, Waverley is in the first phase of new buildings due for completion in just two years' time. Patrick Burns, BBC Midlands Today, Birmingham.